Nick Durst and John Brown. The long, cold, and very slow offseason is now past us, and that means it's time for some more Mets baseball and, of course, more Mets cast. I'm Nick Durst, and I'll be joined in a second by John Brown. We've been doing our show now for a while, and we're happy now to be bringing the show to WG Sports. So once again, I'm Nick Durst, and I'm joined at this time by my co-host for this season and every season, John Brown. Hey, Nick. Thanks for uh, doing the intro there. It's good to be on another network. Um, not sure if I couldn't hear you on the other cut. Did you? Did you mention how we are the number five uh, Mets podcast on iTunes? Uh, yes, we don't like we don't like to brag, but you can catch us on iTunes. We did very well for the 2017 season, the top in the top five for Mets shows. You could also catch us on Spreaker, SoundCloud, or on WGSports.com. But I'm sure you know that because you are listening to us, and for that, we thank you very much. And let's get right into it, John. It was a very slow-moving offseason. Heck, there's still tons of players that haven't been signed. But what we can do is give our listeners an overview of what happened and discuss what we think works, what we think isn't going to work, and we'll take it from there. So let's go in chronological order with the order of things happening. First thing that happened is the Mets, they were very quick to sign Anthony Swarzak. Now, Anthony Swarzak, he's a relief pitcher. Last year, he's with the Chicago White Sox, was traded over to the Milwaukee Brewers. The Mets signed him to a two-year deal worth $14 million. He went 6-4 and four last year. He had a 2.33 ERA and 91 strikeouts between the two teams. On, on paper, you would say, oh, this looks good, but I'm a little worried, John, because this was this guy's career season. Prior to this, he was up and down in the minors. He really never had a great year. I don't know what to expect from him this season. Um, I agree. I agree. So I don't think we overpaid him, first off, so I'm happy about that. Um, I love the year that he had last year with 91 strikeouts in 77 innings, which is you know phenomenal. Uh, exactly what you're looking for. He has He's had a bumpy you know, ups and downs. We're looking at like ERAs in the fives and six. But in 2013, he actually had a very good year as well. Um, it seems that he, he can get a lot of strikeouts. But he's not always getting a lot of innings, and that says that he's probably fighting injuries a lot. Um, you know what? It's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm actually, I actually like the signing because it, it's he's a good veteran arm, um, and I think with uh, the problems that was out in the bullpen, especially at the end of the game last year, I think it's nice to bring him in the mix. Um, 77 innings. If he did, gives us something similar to that, um, I, I'm sign me up right now. Even right, I, gets- I definitely am hoping for the best, but. You know, all these signings that Sandy Ellerson has made in the bullpen during his tenure have all not worked out well. And you look at like Kyle Farnsworth and you know Francisco. Uh, it just they just didn't they didn't they didn't do what you thought they were going to do. And I would have really liked the Mets to go and get like a legit closer and put him in like the eighth inning, like someone like Greg Holland or Wade Davis. And the Mets just weren't really interested in that. And I think they really needed, like, another legit guy. Because Ramos, I personally didn't like what I saw from him once he came over from the Marlins last year. Familia, I think, is going to be good when he bounces back. Uh, Blevins, he's good. He's a lefty specialist, though. And then, you know, you got the question of... And this is going to be a common theme on our show here on this network, if you haven't 
heard our show previously. Uh, the Mets are just relying on Hansel Robles too much. This guy is a disaster. <laughs> Last year he gave up, I think, two grand slams in like a week or something. They finally sent him to the minors with his 70 RA. He was even worse with Vegas and AAA. Then he gets called back up. He continues to be terrible. And he's just pointing to the sky in every pitch, even if it's going over the wall. And for some reason, the organization thinks so highly of him. I don't understand it, John. Yeah, listen, he throws hard, and um, a lot of people, you know, hey, if you can throw a, a four-seam fastball 96 miles per hour, then uh, you can make it in the pros. So they think that he's just this raw talent who's a thrower, and they, they teach him how to pitch. He can become, you know, uh, Chapman, you know, one of these, like, real power arms at the end of the bullpen. I don't think see that at all. I see him as more as this pitching machine that uh, throws a real flat, Fastball, you know, when he does throw hard, right. he has a hard time throwing strikes. He gets into, you know, terrible counts, and he ends up, you know, floating a fat right. one. I think there was one where he 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 either gets lit up where they hit the ball, hit him hard, hits home, they get up home runs, or he remember that one game. I think he uh, there was a walk off wild pitch by him. He just like yep. threw, and he, or a walk off ball four right through it to the backstop. But too much faith is being placed on him. I don't think he's going to be good. Uh, I thought they, sh- they should have moved on, uh, and so they ended up. DFAing uh, Chase and Bradford when they signed Reyes. Uh, and we'll get to Reyes in a little bit. But overall for Swarzak, uh, I think a decent signing. Uh, hopefully it works out. I just would have liked to see them sign an additional arm as well for the bullpen. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think it's, it's a good signing, especially for the price that we got. But it's just, um, it's not enough. We should have signed two or three of these guys that are in that similar bracket. Just because, look, you need professional major league relievers. And, uh, you know, outside of Familia and Blevins, you know, uh, I don't like any of these other arms, honestly. Right. It's a lot, it's, that's going to be the biggest question mark for this team moving forward. Uh, they, they addressed a lot of offensive needs, I think, but the bullpen's going to be a problem. Let's move on to the the, the first uh, signing they made from the offseason as far as offensive players go, and that would be bringing back Jay Bruce. Three-year deal, $39 million. I think to this point, he's still the highest-paid uh, position player in the whole offseason, which is pretty crazy. Who would have thought the Mets would be the ones breaking the bank in, in any offseason? <laughs> uh, he had a career-high 36 home runs last year. I don't think we're going to expect that again. But uh, he's a solid He's a solid player. You, you could expect probably 30 home runs from him, 85 RBIs, but he's not going to hit for average. He's not the best fielder. Uh, you know, I am not too crazy about, about this signing. What did you think about them bringing back Jay Bruce? Um, for what it is, I like it. You, you know, you got to realize he was an RBI machine. Um, you know, he's never going to hit for average, but he never has. Um, he's been consistent, a consistent bat for a long time. Uh, consistent power in this league, it just it, it's not what it once was. So um, the fact that we traded him away last year, we actually brought him back, I'm actually kind of happy about. Um, once again, I don't think that's a crazy contract that will be buried under or anything. Um, I, you know what? I think it's, it's, a, it's a decent move. I don't mind it at all. Well, the reason why I do mind it, and listen, I hope Bruce does well. He's a good guy. But I thought they really needed to get a center fielder, and I think that's because, obviously, Conforto, he's going to play every day. He played a he played a pretty good center field, but he's coming off an injury now. I don't know. I we can't. I don't know what he's going to do fielding wise now. He needs to stay healthy. They're really going to be in trouble if he doesn't come back by May, like they think he's going to. The guy I would have gotten, which uh, if you listen to our previous season between John and I, which we've been saying for a long time, and we they, we said they should have did it last off season, they didn't, and they almost could have had him this off season. And they didn't get him, and that's Andrew McCutcheon, who ends up going to the Giants for basically nothing. What a great fit that would have been, John. Andrew McCutcheon in the middle of the Mets lineup, playing center field between Cespedes and Conforto. I just don't understand why it didn't happen. Um, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, is the contract is it is the contract crazy? I, well, it's just, sure. it's just this year, and then he's a free agent, so maybe that scared them. But I think for this one particular year. And you know, you know, the Mets are an older team, so you got to be playing to win now. You can't say, "Oh, let's rebuild now," and we can't get McCutcheon, who's a an MVP in his in yeah. a, a past few years. Uh, it was just like doesn't make sense to not even pursue him, really. 
Well, do you, do you think that this team is uh, Andrew McCutcheon away from making the playoffs? I think they'd be, you know, obviously this whole team is, is depending on health. They have all these new doctors now. Who knows what the pitchers. If they're healthy, I think having Andrew McCutcheon gives them a better chance to actually make a run in the postseason than Jay Bruce just because of the fact that he is a center fielder. He gives you something Jay Bruce doesn't, and that's speed. McCutcheon's going to hit home runs. McCutcheon is going to play good defense. He's got speed, whereas Bruce, we know he's going to hit home runs because he's not very fast. And I think, you know, the other thing with the Mets is they're like, oh, we don't really know who's going to lead off. Uh, you know, McCutcheon could have let off the good stay with Conforto. I think it just would have helped the lineup a little better. And he had a really good season last year, but it didn't happen. There was actually rumors that the Mets had a deal in place, but then uh, the, the Pirates wanted Brandon Nimmo, so it fell apart. Uh, <laughs> but listen, I like Brandon Nimmo, uh, and now with the way the team's constructed now, Nimmo and Lagarus are going to be playing center field until Conforto comes back. And Nimmo's going to be leading off, and I think he's going to do well. He did well last year, and he's going to have to hold down the fort until Conforto gets back. So, Bruce, I, I, I like it because he's, he's going to be consistent for the most part. I don't know what he's going to be three years from now, but I don't like it because this makes Conforto play center field. And I don't know if, if that's going to work out in the long term, especially coming off the injury. So that's a signing that... It's two signings that I was so soft. The next signing was that the Mets, they signed Adrian Gonzalez after the Braves got rid of him. It's a great signing because as the Mets, they don't have much money, basically. They don't have to pay him, really. They're only paying him 545000 The Braves are paying the rest of his $21.5 million deal this year. He was hurt last year. He had a herniated disc in his back, and he only played 71 games. But listen to this, John. Dating back to 2006, up until last year, he played at least 156 games each season. This is a guy who is capable of hitting 35 home runs and driving in 90 runs if healthy. I I really love the signing, especially since they're not paying him much. He's 36, which is scary, but the guy had seven years where he knocked in over 100 runs. That's phenomenal. Sign me up all day, every day, especially for that price. You know, he's, he's probably making less money from the Mets than some of these minor leaguer guys. So uh, why not? At the, at the very worst case scenario, he hurts himself again. He gives on the DL, you know, so so be it. Um, at the very best, he plays pretty good. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe he even pushes some of the younger guys or maybe he steals the job. Who knows? Right. Either so way, the, the, uh, plan, the plan right now is Adrian Gonzalez is going to be the first baseman to start the season. And to me, that makes a lot of sense. Dom Smith last year, he batted 198 in majors. Obviously, he was maybe he was fatigued for the long season. Struggled, he just struggled to hit. And now with Gonzalez, you let him play April. You can have Flores play against the lefties still. And if Gonzalez has a terrible April, right, if he, he's not hitting at all, and Smith is tearing it up in AAA, you just get rid of Gonzalez to release him and call up Dom Smith. And I think that's the way to do it. I think it's there's a, it's a it's a low risk high, re, high reward signing. And with you know, Dom Smith, the first day of spring training, John, this guy is late to the team meeting and he gets pulled from the starting lineup. And apparently, the, we didn't know this, but now it came out that he was late a few times in September to games too. That's not the type of attitude a guy needs to have or persona to have when he's trying to make the team and be the starting first baseman. Yeah, you know. I actually really like the fact that Callaway, you know, sort of, you know, showed you his chops as a manager and not let some of these young guys walk all over him. Um, I'm actually really disappointed in him uh, just because, listen, you're a young guy. Uh, you got, you know, you got your cup of coffee last year. You struggled. But, you know, all the scouts say that you can hit at the major league level. Um, they trade away their first baseman, in Lucas Duda, last year, opening up a spot for you, quote unquote. You know, they don't go out and sign anyone who's really going to take the job over you know Adrian Gonzalez is a one-year deal he's 36 years old obviously that's band-aid so you know the Mets did all the right things when it comes to him and it just looks like he's he's not mature enough to take this opportunity by the horns and and really take you know take advantage of it and and it's uh it sucks because you know I can just see the writing on the wall you know um we were talking about this before we we got on 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 the on the show here but um you know it reminds very much of Geno Smith uh just like you know Oh, yeah, I'm late. Oh, that sucks. Well, this isn't your job at, you know, 
Red Robin. This is a, this is the Major League Baseball game. It's the first spring training game. You're the starting first baseman. You know, my alarm didn't go off. That seems like some BS. Yeah, and you're in a hotel, I'm assuming, maybe. I don't know. Maybe you could have got a wake-up call, but I don't know. Uh, maybe the alarm didn't go off. It happens sometimes, but who knows. But he is a, he is a professional. Uh, I think Bucky Callaway did the right thing. He showed discipline. He said nobody's going to you know, mistreat the team. And that, that was something that had to be done. So I think Adrian Gonzalez is definitely going to start at first base. And now we move over across the diamond to third base. The Mets finally got Todd Frazier. We were saying, get Todd Frazier, get Todd Frazier. I've been saying this for years now, uh, dating back to when he was in the Reds. So they signed Todd Frazier to a two-year deal worth $17 million. This is a guy, John, who is probably going to hit at least 25 home runs and have at least 75 RBIs while playing really solid defense. And don't forget the fact that he could actually play a lot of... He could play first base if we need him to, too. He's played there a bunch in, in his career. And the best part about him is that he's a great clubhouse leader. This is something the Mets have missed without David Wright, and now, of course, no Curtis Granderson either. So he's going to fill a big void for this franchise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they were talking about that in the post game yesterday, uh, that, you know, he's just he just got here, and he already has, like, taken over the locker room. And, you know, it, it's very much, you know, a team culture emulates from, from some of these guys where, you know, He's always smiling. He's happy about being there. He, he has an honest, you know, love for the game um, where, you know, that's a good example for some of these young guys. And hopefully guys like, um, you know, Smith will see this and, you know, try to emulate it as well. Because, you know, uh, Frazier, like, like it's such a good sign. Like I understand he's he's very much in the same boat as um, – Jay Bruce when it comes to someone who's not going to hit 340, but has a lot of pop, plays a very good field. Um, you know, he stays out there and he's going to pl play a lot of games. Uh, I love it. I just, you know, I think that the signing is probably two years too late. Uh, I wish they would have done it in the past, but I'm glad that they did now. Um, and it's not a bad deal either. Like, n none of the deals that they made were very risky. You know, none of them were these deals where you're like, oh, no. Like, remember the Oliver Perez deal years ago that – as soon as they made it, everyone was going, "Oh no!" It wasn't. Not, none of these deals were like that. The Frazier deal, the Bruce deal. I'm actually, I like both these guys. Um, you know, I don't think any of them are going to be MVP candidates, but they're major league ball players, and I like that. Yeah, Frazier, I think, is the sign I like the best, just because the leadership, the good defense, the, the ability to play first and third. He's going to hit a bunch of home runs. And now you look at you got Bruce Gonzalez and Frazier to go along with Cespedes and Conforto. And the lineup is just a lot longer now. Of course, Cabrera is going to be in there batting second, and it's just it's just a better lineup. You got you got Darno at the bottom and Rosario, and it's definitely it's definitely a better lineup than last year. I really think that that's that's something that had to be addressed. It's a major improvement. Uh, the other thing was that the Mets re-signed Jose Reyes to a two million dollar deal for one year. It's definitely great to bring him back. He was the best second baseman available of those that were being available on the market between Neil Walker and Josh Harrison. And the reason I say that is because of his second half stats. In the second half of the season last year, Reyes, in 62 games, he batted 288. He had seven home runs, 29 RBIs, 39 runs scored, and 14 stolen bases. This gives the Mets speed. The Mets needed speed. And, of course, Reyes is a little versatile now. He can play third, he can play short, he can play second, which is good. He's a great mentor for Rosario. He he and Cabrera keep uh, Cespedes in check. He, Cespedes listens to them because they're veterans. And they have the same type of culture and stuff. And you look at the other people that the Mets were considering getting. Neil Walker, been there, done that. In the second half of the season last year, this guy, he played 51 games. He batted only 258. And he scored 24 times. He only had five home runs. He had 16 RBIs and, of course, zero stolen bases. Josh Harrison, the guy that everyone was saying, oh, that's need to trade for him, he only batted 255. He had 28 runs scored. He hit six home runs. He had 18 RBIs, and he only stole two bases. So, by far, Jose Reyes was the best option of those three. And you're bringing him back now, and he's not even going to be the starter. He's just going to be... The super versatile guy off the bench could come in and play second for days when Cabrera needs rest, Frazier needs a day off, Rosario needs a day off, 
And he's going to be a good mentor to the Hispanic players in the locker room, especially the younger guys. And I think it was a good signing. It's definitely great to see him back. And the thing I like most about it is that he definitely, definitely wanted to be a Met, and he's still going to be a Met. It's good to have players that want to be there. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's, you know, uh, I always used to fight with Yankee fans for years over this about all the un- untangible stats that Derek Jeter had. But I think one of them is wanting to be there. You know, the hired gun free agent that comes and, and plays or whatever, he's not going to really play through those injuries, you know, and uh, they're not going to really have their head in the game. But I, Jose really wants to be here. I like the deal. Um, obviously, you, you want it's short term, so his legs and his age are always an issue. But hey, if he's not playing every day, you could probably get a lot out of Reyes because he's not the fatigue of this long 162 game season isn't going to just destroy his legs. You know, you you can play him to try to keep Cabrera fresh. You know, maybe even uh, you know, depending on how the first base thing shakes out, you end up might playing Reyes at third every day and Frazier at first. Who knows? Um, you know, because if Don Smith doesn't take the job, Adrian Gonzalez's back goes on him. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that could right. happen. But the other thing, in the meantime, while everybody's healthy, and who knows how long that, who long, who knows how long that's going to last? This race is going to give something the Mets haven't had in a really long time. That's a late inning guy who could pinch run. You need a stolen base. You need a guy mm. to go first to third. You need a guy to go from second to home. That's going to be Rice because that's something the Mets have really lacked. Probably like the last like. Eight years, right? I, I really can't think of the last time they had somebody who filled that type of role. Since like maybe Andy, Sh- Andy Chavez or Eric Young, yeah, I Eric mean, Young Jr. Yeah, so I mean, it's it, it's good to see. <laughs> to have some, it's good to have some speed on the on the base paths for a change with the Mets. And absolutely. So you know, it's late innings, and you get you know Bruce gets a single. You don't want you know nothing against Bruce. I like him, but he's this big lumbering dude. You know, it's a one run ball game. You need the guy to score on a single. Yep. Get someone off the bench. And what we did the last couple of years is we had pitchers doing it. Yeah. I hate that. I hate no hate, more hate, No hate. more Zach Wheeler or Jacob DeGrom running the bases and pulling hamstrings and getting out of the season. I, don't want, I want them not to show up to games they're not pitching in. I want them to be like Roger Clemens was in down in, in uh, Texas. It, well, if you're not starting, don't show up because I don't want you running the bases – and, uh, over some nonsense, you know what I mean? Like, ah. All right. I look, Ho- hopefully, I hopefully, we don't have to see the Mets like using Wheeler, Degrom, and Syndergaard as pinch hitters anymore either. But <laughs> who, who knows? I mean, there was that's another thing with the roster. They always mismanage like the amount of guys on the bench because oh, this guy's hurt. Like last year, Sesame just got hurt. So instead of putting him on a ten day DL, they made him sit in the bench for nine days. Then he played a game, and he was out for, the, for like months because he, he he was still hurt. And the, the playing men down on the bench. Remember the game? Travis Darno had to play third base because they just totally mismanaged the roster. But I don't know. Hopefully now with Rice like on the bench, you got Flores, uh, TJ Rivera will ultimately come back from Tommy John surgery. So it's a lot deeper of a roster, which could definitely benefit the team and help them win games. And the last signing the Mets have made so far, who knows if you know, some some other person they might sign if the, the price is right, and that would be Jason Vargas. The former Met was a Met in 2007. He went 8 and 11 last year, but he had a high ERA, 4.6, 4.16 in 179 and two thirds innings. That was 32 starts, which was good. And up until August, he was actually 13 of four, and he had a three ERA, but he had a rough August. He went one and five with a 7.18 ERA in September. He went four and two, but he had a high ERA of 5.72. But this is his first full year back from Tommy John surgery, which he had in 2015, and it's always tough to come back. So overall, a decent season for him, and they signed him to a two-year deal worth $16 million. Uh, I actually, um, I'm going to counter signal for, for once. I actually don't like this deal. Um, well, listen, I'm, I'm, John, I didn't say I like the deal. I was just like, get, letting you uh, discuss it first. But my opinion on it is that. Uh, you know, two years. I don't know. I, I would if, if they're going to say, "Hey, Jason, you're going to be another left, another lefty in the bullpen for us." Then I really like it because they need another lefty in the bullpen. I rather see Wheeler. I rather see Mats. I rather see Lugo. I rather see Harvey. I rather see Degrom. I rather see Syndergaard. Those are the six guys that I think should be considered for the starters. I don't want Giselleman starting. Uh, I don't really want Montero starting. But now they're saying Vargas is definitely going to start, and I I rather just go with the other guys. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. You know, um, if he becomes the long, long man slash uh, second lefty in the bullpen, then I think it's a good good deal. I just, you know, it's a it, he's a 35 year old pitcher who's a couple years removed from Tommy John surgery, who the wheels fell off in the end of the season last year. Right. That's not a good sign, you know. That, that to me says that his arm's dead. Um, so I don't really want him to be the fifth starter. I, I you know, I think you get a bigger, uh, you know, there's there's more. Uh, space to grow with some of these younger guys you know i'd rather see lugo or, or you know wheeler there has been some rumblings on Mets twitter that wheeler's going to start out of the bullpen from the you know all right wheeler is not happy about that they asked him like when Vargas uh, signed what do you think he was like mm, uh, i don't like it or no comment something like that and i mean wheeler this is a guy that before he had tommy john surgery you know, this is the trend with the mets he was viewed as maybe he was going to be the number two to to harvey right and the ties have changed, but uh, he went through this, like, crazy off-season procedure to, like, strengthen his bones every day for, like, three, four months. I don't know. I think that – I think he should have the right to earn a spot in the rotation in spring training. And I don't think that just based on the fact that Alderson paid a lot of money for Vargas um, and that he's a lefty, should he be given the first chance at making the rotation. I think it should be open competition between the the young the younger players and obviously the veteran Jason Vargas. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I'm just looking at this at like, you know, a complete macro level where, you know, I pretend like I'm not a Met fan, you know, Wheeler is seven years younger than him, almost eight years younger than him, and he's twenty pounds less than him and four five inches taller than him. So, you know, we it just makes sense that Wheeler's the better way to go with this. Um but, you know, maybe this is just an insurance policy because we had complained in the past that, you know, uh, the Mets didn't have any insurance policy. So, you know, maybe this Vargas is just, uh, you know, God forbid, knock on wood, you know, four starters get hurt like they did last year. And, hey, we need someone out there throwing the ball. Right. We shall see. I, I think we're both in agreement that if he's in the bullpen, it definitely helps the bullpen out. The bullpen, I think, to me, is going to be the biggest issue uh, in this season. Uh, the offseason season. Lots of signings. The Mets are actually one of the most active teams. But it's all going to come down to health and the bullpen, I think. The offense last year, they had the most home runs in, in the National League. What did that do for them? The offense is still going to be there. They need to stay healthy. Sesame needs to play the whole year. Kafor needs to play the whole year. And Rosario needs to have a big year. But as we go along throughout spring training, and of course the season, we'll look forward to the season. But for now... That's the off-season overview. We hope you enjoyed the Mets cast, our first episode here on Double G Sports. And until next time, everybody, let's go Mets.